All right, so this video is about uh, Sentry.io. This is a fantastic tool for developers for application monitoring, error handling and logging, etc. And if you come here, you'll see it has several different price tags on it. And I'm currently using the free version for developers. And I have to confess that I'm very new with, at this. And if anybody watching this with more experience, please let me know how I can improve this or what am I doing wrong here, all right? That being said, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to start by signing in to my account. And I'm using my Google account to log in. All right, so right here I created a project for myself. Initially, you can always go create project. Okay, and when we are in this screen, let's say I want to create a React project. I'm going to choose that and just put a name in there, test. And I always click here, alert me on every issue, create project. And as soon as I create the project, they give you this instructions and a snippet of code, right? So with that, I can now go back to my code and paste those in and install the necessary modules and I can get started. Now, I've already done this on my application, so let's just go and see how I did it. Okay, so uh, I have a very simple uh, React application here, pulling in some data, and let's go and see the code. Um, at the back end, this is where the index.js snippet they give you, you can just go ahead and paste it in here, right? Just, uh, I'm talking about this one. Right above this uh, React DOM render function, you can just paste it in and take it from there. But what I did though, you know, just to keep this file clear, I just uh, created a logger service, which is right here. In this one, I actually isolated all the Sentry stuff. These are the two modules they tell you to install with NPM. So after I installed this and I created a function and I'm returning that Sentry.init, the whole thing, right? And initially, in their code, they don't give you this, right? So let's uh, make it so. So first of all, let's see when I pasted this code in and I went back to my app. When I refreshed, this is what I got. Bunch of errors and all of a sudden my app stopped working. And I look into that, I found there's access control allow origin kind of error, which is CORS or CORS error, right? You go here, you'll see CORS, CORS policy error. And this happens usually when you try to uh, create applications or make calls among interdomain, right? I mean, anyway, uh, if you want to know more about it, just Google it, you'll know what this error is. But before I added the Sentry code, I did not have this issue, right? So I had to go and add a plugin. Okay, so by plugin, I meant uh, Chrome Web Extension. And to be specific, this is the one I installed right here and once I did in here I had to go ahead and turn it on it, in tur it turns red and then when I refresh my data comes back but then I was having an issue with Sentry very clearly it looked like it wasn't communicating with my application and when I go look in my account my issues kept empty, right? And uh, all the data you saw, the performance data, nothing was showing up. So after further research, I found out that I had a bunch of extensions that were stopping me from getting Sentry to work. And these were the culprits, the ad blockers, right? So I had to turn them off, all of them. 
Once I did that, then when I refreshed, all the errors were gone. And when I open my Sentry back on, all my per performance data kept coming back. All this data started registering, right? But what I didn't have was issues. This was completely empty. No matter what I did, they never showed up. Let me show you an example. In here, I just found, let's say, a page. Let's choose load more, right? This page. And I enabled a fake button with a fake function, which you cannot find anywhere, right? So I saved that. And this was supposed to be shown in here as soon as this showed up, right? As soon as this error showed up, this should be registering right here, but it wasn't doing it. So after further research, I found out that I had to go to my services and logger service and turn these two entries on. Save. Once I did that, I went back, kept refreshing. Okay, so I want to refresh a few times more here and something should be coming up here there you go there you go load more page load more page right here and we can just go in and find lots and lots of data on that same issue and at this point, we can set it up for, we can ignore this, like a select and ignore is gonna end up here. If we just hit resolve, then it's gonna just go away. Now, this is how the base errors are showing up, are gonna show up, right, unhandled errors. But then after a little further research, I learned how to show the handled errors. These are unhandled, and let me show you how to handle the errors that we get through try catch basically the handled errors let's go check it out okay so we're back at the code and let's go fix this one so this is the one the unhandled error uh, we actually generated so let's uh, disable this and make sure our app is working and it is so now Let's go check out our WP API service. In here, we have a you know try catch error or handle error, right? So to handle that, I imported the sentry in here and I added this line. Whatever I'm gonna you know console log, I'm gonna also send it to the sentry.io using this line sentry.capture exceptions and error, right? So let's save that. And uh, this is a service that I'm using in one of the pages called Masonry. In here, you can see I can, I'm calling in that fetch post function from the service. And I'm using that inside use effect, right? So if I refresh this page with an error, that will generate one of my handled error from this guy. And in here, uh, when I'm instantiating the WP API, I need these three properties. And these three properties are coming from my config.json file. And if I go here, this is where I have my API URL, my username, password. Everything is there, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and initiate an error by giving it a wrong URL. Now that, you know, everything looking good, I mean, you know, it's not going to impact this at all, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and since this masonry page is going to cause that error, so I'm going to hit that one. And as you can see right here, it generated an error. So now let's see if this shows up. And it does. This is the exact error we created. It is our handled error. And we managed to pass it along to Sentry for analysis.
and look how much data it gives me. I mean, some of them I don't even know how to decipher at this point because I'm new at this, but this is how we can handle our error, log our error in a remote service called Sentry.io. And at the same time, I just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview here at the performance data, you know, what they're loading, how much time they're taking each page. Front end is separated, back end, mobile data, which I don't have much, all transactions. And these are all coming from a lo simple local app, this one, a React app. And this should give you a quick start at how to utilize this excellent uh, logging service from a development perspective. That should be all for this video. If you like it, please smash the like button and please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please smash the like button and the subscribe button. This will help me bring more free contents like this to you every week. Thanks again.